Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on with my tutorials discussing complex analysis. Specifically, this is video number 5 and I'm going to discuss the relationship between Green's theorem and the divergence theorem. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all my videos archived and listed and have other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you of the relevant videos and the previous videos in this section. Of course, we are discussing complex analysis, so the videos on uh, complex numbers are important. In video 1 in this section, I derived the Cauchy-Riemann equations. In videos 2 and 3, I derived Green's theorem using two different methods. And in video 4, I derived the divergence theorem. So what we're going to do in this particular video is show the relationship between Green's theorem and the divergence theorem. I suggest to you that Green's theorem is the two-dimensional version of the divergence theorem. In order to do this, we're going to manipulate each of the theorems but using a different vector field and later we will see if the two vector fields turn out to be equal. So let's suggest we're dealing with the vector field capital R in two dimensions R sub X I hat plus R sub Y J hat and the vector field capital A which is A sub X I hat plus A sub Y J hat. I have written the two theorems on the bottom of your screen. First looking at the divergence theorem. It says that if we take the anti-clockwise closed surface integral of the vector field capital A dotted with the vector area small da that's equivalent to calculating the volume integral of the divergence of A. If we look at Green's theorem where we take the closed line integral of a vector field let's say capital R with the infinitesimal line segment dl it's equivalent to calculating the surface integral of del r sub y del x minus del r sub x del y. So what we're going to do now is begin by looking at the divergence theorem and let's see in fact if Green's theorem is the two-dimensional version of the divergence theorem. First of all let's look at the first component of the divergence theorem the surface integral of a dot da. If we rewrite this two-dimensional surface integral as a line integral, which is done down here, we get the following. We get the closed line integral, I probably should have a C written here, the closed line integral of a dot dl, where dl is the infinitesimal line segment, but we use the unit normal n hat to make life easier and invoke the dot product, a dot n hat dl. Next, if we look at the second component, the volume integral of the divergence of A. This is on the bottom left of your screen. If we convert this from a two-dimensional function to a three-dimensional function, we go to a surface integral and we still have the divergence of A. So, now what we have is this function here equaling, equaling excuse me, this function here if we convert the divergence theorem into two dimensions. But let's look a bit more about these two new expressions or at these two new expressions. Let's first look at the surface integral of the divergence of A which is down here. If we take the divergence of A we're going to get this expression in here del A sub X del X plus del A sub Y del Y. That's pretty straightforward. Now let's look at this expression here. We're simply going to take the dot product and see what happens. Well that's written down here and we're going to get the closed line integral of a sub x i hat dot dx i hat plus a sub y j hat dot dy j hat. Very straightforward stuff. Putting this all together we can suggest that the two-dimensional divergence theorem is none other than the closed uh, line integral of a dot n hat dl which is equal to the surface area 
excuse me, the surface integral of the divergence of A. Is this Green's theorem? It certainly doesn't really look like it just yet. Let's investigate Green's theorem path integral. So Green's theorem is written there at the top of your screen. As I said at the start, C is anti-clockwise and DL of course has to be tangential to it. That's the definition of DL. Now we need to do a small bit of thinking here and it's 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 a bit of logic but it's not 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 very straightforward. It's quite subtle. N hat, the normal, will always of course be uh, perpendicular to our curve. Our curve is in, is in green here whereas DL is, is purple and that's tangential to our, to, our, to our curve. Now the magnitude of course of our normal vector has to be 1. I mean that's the definition of our unit normal. Next we look at the definition of DL. DL is none other than dx i hat plus dy j hat. Okay there's nothing out of the ordinary there. But if dl is going this direction here and n hat is going this direction here then n hat dl must be perpendicular to dl. This is because by multiplying by dl hat we're changing the direction of dl. We're keeping the mag magnitude the same but changing its direction. Since n hat is perpendicular to dl n hat dl is perpendicular to dl. Of course the magnitude of n hat dl is going to be the same as the magnitude of dl because the magnitude of n hat is none other than 1. Consider a new vector. I'm going to call it dl prime just to distinguish it from dl. But let's say instead of having it plus dx i hat plus dy j hat it's minus dx i hat plus dy j hat. If you think about it, dl prime is also perpendicular to dl, which means it is parallel to n hat dl. Now what is the magnitude of dl prime? Well, the magnitude is nothing else but the, the sum of the squares of the components square rooted. But the negative component here inside the square is going to get going to become positive and as a result the magnitude of dl and the magnitude of dl prime are the same you might be saying to yourself who cares get to the point the point is this we already saw that n hat dl the magnitude of that excuse me is equal to the magnitude of dl but so is the magnitude uh, of dl equal to dl prime. Therefore n hat dl is equal to or the magnitude of n hat dl is equal to the magnitude of dl prime. And both of them point in the same direction perpendicular to dl. We must therefore conclude that n hat dl is equal to dl prime is equal to minus dx i hat plus dy j hat. We are going to use this in order to manipulate the left hand side of Green's theorem that the closed line integral of r dot d, or the, excuse me, the closed line integral of r dl. So r dot dl is r sub x i hat dot dx i hat plus r sub y j hat dot dy j hat. Doing the dot product we get r sub x dx plus r sub y dy. Now if we think about it there is another dot product which is reasonably similar which will give the same result. Consider taking the dot product of minus r sub x i hat plus r sub y j hat with minus dx i hat plus dy j hat. This of course also equals r sub x dx plus r sub y dy 
which is of course the closed line integral of r dot dl, which is exactly what we started with up here. Now, we saw up here that minus dx i hat plus dy j hat can be rewritten as n hat dl. So I'm going to plug in n hat dl down here. This simply gives us another way of writing the expression. It's not particularly important, but it is useful. The point here is, and I've just given it a bit, I've just embellished it a bit here. The point here is that we have two different dot products which will give us the same result. And this means we can rewrite our original closed line integral. And I've done that on the bottom of your screen. So if the closed line integral of r dot dl, that's equivalent to the closed line integral of minus r sub x i hat plus r sub y j hat dotted with n hat dl. And this is really just some mathematical manipulation. It's a bit of a pain in the face, but with these things, as I said in video number one, we have to do it in order to get the really powerful result. Really, however, we are now using a new function because we initially started out with r is equal to r sub x i hat, well say plus r sub x i hat, plus r sub y j hat. But now we are using one which is minus r sub x i hat, plus r sub y j hat. So, you know, it's a different function. Let's give it a new name. We're going to call this f. This is a new vector field, f. So the point here is that f sub x is minus r sub x, this is really important, the signs are very important, and f sub y is plus r sub y. If we write it this way, we can rewrite the closed line integral of r dot dl as the closed line integral of f dot n hat dl. Now I hope you can see the usefulness of bringing in this unit normal. It really simplifies the result. Let's remind ourselves what the path integral from Green's theorem was, uh, has now become. So we say it's the closed line integral of r dot dl is the closed line integral of f dot n hat dl. Green's theorem then is written at the very bottom of your screen. So we have the closed line integral of r dot dl is the double integral of del r sub y del x minus del r sub x del y dx dy which as we've just seen is equal to the closed line integral of f dot n hat dl. I've rewritten this on the top of the screen and just for clarity's sake I've written the relationship between the vector field f and the vector field r. Of course as I'm, I'm stressing it because it's, it's quite subtle is this the difference is this negate here. Let's remind ourselves what the two-dimensional divergence theorem was. I've written that at the towards the bottom of your screen. So you have the closed surface, excuse me, the closed line integral of the of a dot dl is the surface integral of the divergence of a. Now at the bottom of your screen, I've written what defined a to be a sub x i hat and a sub y j hat. You might think I'm being overly pedantic or fastidious with these particular definitions, but it's something that I found I needed to do when I was deriving this at the start, so perhaps it's something which you might find useful if I do. Let's plug the vector field f into the two-dimensional divergence theorem here and see what happens. So we're going to plug it into the divergence of that surface integral, in that surface integral. So we're going to take the divergence of f. That's pretty straightforward. It's going to be del f sub x del x plus del f sub y del y. But the whole point is that f is related to r with this minus sign. Putting it all together so if we plug in this vector field f into the two-dimensional divergence theorem, 
and relate it back to r, we get the surface integral of minus del r sub x del x plus del r sub y del y, which is written at the bottom of your screen. We are very nearly there, but it is a very subtle argument that follows. So note the expression at the top of your screen. This is what happens when we plug the vector field f, which came from Green's theorem, into the two-dimensional divergence theorem. Let's go back to Green's theorem. So Green's theorem, we started out with the vector field r, and we had this, this expression here on the left. But we found, through a small bit of a sleight of hand, that this is equivalent to the closed line integral of a new vector field f dot n hat dl. It appears, and if you look closely, it appears that if we were to say that the vector field r, which is equal to r sub x i hat plus r sub y j hat, is related to the vector field f, f by saying f is equal to r sub y i hat minus r sub x j hat, we will make some progress. Just to remind you why this is the case, by plugging the vector field f into the two-dimensional divergence theorem, we got the differentiation of r sub x, but with respect to x. We got the differentiation of r sub y, but with respect to y. But in Green's theorem, we have something, we've kind of got the opposite. We have the differentiation of r sub y with respect to x, and r sub x with respect to y. So in order for us to be able to match the two of these, we must say that the vector field f is equal to r sub y i hat minus r sub x j hat. If we plug that in, we get exactly what we want. We get the right hand side of Green's theorem. And doing this won't change the n hat from the left hand side either. That's just, that's a very important subtlety. So, how do we put it together? If we have a vector field r, and we put it into Green's theorem, r dot dl, the closed line integral, is equal to the surface integral of del r sub y del x minus del r sub x del y. If we define another vector field, capital A, as r sub y i hat minus r sub x j hat, then this is equivalent to the two-dimensional divergence theorem, and we can use this expression down here at the bottom of your screen. So there is a bit of a proviso, there is a bit of a caveat, but nonetheless, Green's theorem is equivalent to the two-dimensional divergence theorem. So that was quite difficult. Nonetheless, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, excuse me, and you might also check out universityphysicstutorials.com.